In her first story, new entrants to parliament are promising to prioritize the socio-economic development of the country as the seventh parliament of the Fourth Republic resumes sitting today. The House is discussing how to constitute various select committees. Ahead of that, some of the new entrants have been sharing the expectations with Joy News. A new entrant to the House, any major expectations of how things should pan out over the next four years? Yeah, yes. I think uh, it's my expectation that uh, the, the senior members in Parliament will give us the, the opportunity to also uh, present our uh, views about our constituents, uh, particularly the youth and the women affairs. You are stepping into very big shoes, that of um, Papa Usankama, uh, uh, you know, who, who was a guru, if I could call him so, here in Parliament. Uh, for you, any major expectation? Well, I expect that uh, we would make our contribution uh, uh, and, and ensure that our voices are heard. Of course, our voice is the voice of our constituents, so uh, that is essentially what our uh, motive is, is to, is to let their voices be heard. You are an NPP MP, um, so then usually there are concerns about you playing to the government's gallery, you being the ones on the majority side, you not doing your best in terms of holding the incumbent government to account. Usually that's how the you know, previous parliaments have played the political game. Would it be the same with you personally, for example? Uh, I hope not. Uh, of course, uh, we came here on the ticket of a political party. So as much as possible, we need to ensure that the programs that we all know uh, is the, forms part of the party's agenda is pushed through. Of course, that is not to say we are going to rob a stamp, but we're going to critique uh, most of the policy propositions that come so that we as a country, at the end of the day, tend to benefit from whatever proposal that the government is, is bringing across. Thank you very much. Let's hear from a lot more of the members of parliament. Um, the Honorable Pamford Atto is the member of parliament for the Shama constituency. Um, so you are walking into uh, you know, the house representing the people of Shama in the western region. Um, what can they expect of you, even as you serve here for the next four years? Well, thank you very much. I think uh, it's quite very something dear on my heart to see what I do for my constraints. And indeed, uh, I'm coming with a background of industry. So I'm here to push on the industrial agenda, making sure that I try as much as possible in the next four years that Shama district or constituency should be an industrial hub within the western region. Good to have you here uh, from the Buffer Stock Company today. You are here in Parliament. Uh, how is the feeling like? Well, great. I mean, um, I think every politician wants to, you know, aspire to greater heights. And Parliament, to me, is very essential if you really want to get to that level. So being here, um, I think the feeling is great for me. Sadly for you, you are coming here at a time when your party is actually in opposition and you'll be the minority side. Um, in terms of helping put the incumbent government on its toes as an NDC MP, what can your people and Ghanaians in general expect? Well, um, we know why we uh, people voted for the MPP. Um, they gave a lot of promises. I think um, based on that, people, you know, uh, decided that they'll give them the chance. So for us as uh, opposition MPs, I believe that we really have to keep them to their toes because we know that if we do that, then they will deliver. And we want them to deliver. We want them to succeed. So we'll definitely make sure that we put them to their toes. Whatever they promised has to be done. Uh, for Ghanaians to get a benefit of um, why they, you know, des decided to vote for them. So th those were some uh, new entrants to Parliament sharing their expectations with us here on Joy News. Uh, currently live on the ground, uh, some MPs are interacting uh, with one another, as you can see. And it uh, looks like the house is not settled for business yet. But my colleague, Joseph Opuku Gakbo, is live in Parliament and we'll be touching base with him for the latest updates from the house. Away from Parliament, the Ghana Police Service has intensified security at the passport office after NPP activists stormed the premises Monday afternoon to allegedly take over the facility. Joe News' Joseph Akable visited the passport office this morning and spoke to the director who confirmed calm has been restored to the place. The fact of the matter is that since we came here this morning, we haven't had any incident with anybody. And so we think 
the situation is calm and we are doing our work uh, as usual. Uh, coming in, we realize that work was ongoing as usual. Is that a case in the other offices across the country? Well, uh, having to received any report of any invasion in any of the regional offices apart from the Greater Accra uh, Passport Application Centre, that is the Thomas Station, and I'm uh, fully uh, informed that uh, uh, the police have deployed the, their personnel there, so uh, we, 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 we are in control. When did that happen? This morning, the police uh, sent some personnel there. They, uh, DSP, Abbas, and uh, ASP of Ratinga were here to confirm that they were there and the personnel have been positioned as strategic uh, positions. And even the crowd control there uh, is being manned by the police officers now. As I speak to you right now, I'm standing on a compound here at the main passport office in the Ridge. And what we can announce for our listeners is the fact that as it stands, activities are back to normal. And in terms of activities, I'm talking about the business that takes place in the office. In fact, I've entered, I, as you saw the interview, I engaged the director of passports. Activities within the premises is ongoing. There is police presence on the compound here. Uh, in fact, when we came over, we met at the Greater Accra Regional Public Relations Officer of the Police, uh, ASP. We met her. She was over here assessing the situation. Uh, we're trying to get an understanding from the police perspective as to the reports they've picked from the various uh, command within this region. But the point she's making again is that uh, she speaks for the entire region and she's still waiting to receive the reports from the various district commanders as to the real situation before she can make any comment on that. But what we can report for now for a fact is that calm has been restored. Work is back to normal here at the passport office in Accra. Police officers are manning the main entrance, unlike yesterday when we came over where we saw uh, some gentlemen who we now know uh, belong to the supposed NPP invincible forces uh, who were trying to take over the police as it stands the police are in charge there is police presence uh, right from the main entrance and also within the premises ensuring that all is calm and activities are back to normal here at the passport office in Accra. And, and uh, Joseph apart from the police saying that uh, they're waiting for reports from the various uh, places where uh, some MPP alleged MPP supporters invaded do you have an indication of what they plan to do to avert some of these things. In fact, the point I made to where uh, that is in trying to get a confirmation as to who is a man in the post, uh, what I was trying to ask her exactly, um, it's as to what the arrangement has been. And the point she kept reiterating, and I, in fact, I put it to where that it appears they've beefed up security, uh, contrary to when I came in yesterday, and she was explaining that it's because of what transpired here. So obviously, we don't expect the situation to be any different. So that alone, uh, it's one measure that we can confirm for a fact that they appear to have put in place. So it appears that in the number of personnel has increased. Uh, we understand ordinarily you don't have that many uh, police officers stationed here but there has been an increase and that is what we expect to be the case in the various offices in terms of the various facilities that there are reports that they are being under some form of attack uh, so as it stands that is the situation the police is still waiting uh, to receive the report from the various commands in terms of the district commanders within the district after which they'll make a clear position we don't know for also for a fact whether they've made any arrest yet so that is what we cannot speak of yesterday when i came over right when i was on the compound two gentlemen were escorted in a police van away to the greater regional command but they are still saying it wasn't an arrest they were going to engage them so that is all what we have the information we'll be able to pick up so far that is what we can authoritatively put out there all right joseph can you take a quick pan can can the camera take a quick pan so we have a view of uh, what the yeah, place so, looks like so right in your shot is the main uh, entrance there. Uh, so yesterday when we came over, uh, so you can see a, a police officer just exiting from one of the checkpoints. Uh, a police officer just exiting from the checkpoint and moving over there. So it's one of the armed officers uh, stationed here. So you can see people are coming in. Those you see coming in, they are coming in because it is open. Yesterday, you wouldn't have the opportunity to come in uh, simply because uh, there were, you had two parallel access systems uh, being put in place here. One being controlled by uh, the security person, another being controlled by uh, these gentlemen from the invincible forces but this morning the situation is different you can't come in if you are coming over to engage in any service that this part of office is supposed to provide it's because activities are back to normal and it's open and it's operating and that is the good news for the many Ghanaians and we can't confirm indeed that those supposed uh, who belong to the invincible forces they are not within their premises for now it's under the control of the Ghana police service I spoke to Joseph earlier on Joe News Desk. Let's now move to Agbogloshi, where residents in that slum community began deserting their homes following a clash between activists of the NPP and NDC. My colleague Joseph Akabley again is there to bring us the latest. 
Hello, Joseph. Which part of Agboblochi are you now, and what can you report? Uh, well, Dennis, I just moved away from uh, the bridge that lead to that is a very key bridge that you need to cross over and move into the inner part of the market. Now, just uh, very close to the bridge is a car wash that is a public one, we understand. But some few minutes ago, uh, some gentlemen who we understand to be activists of the governing MTP, they have seized some equipment from that car wash and they have left with those equipment, meaning that as it stands, there is no activity ongoing. In fact, about 30 minutes when we arrived at the market, the police were calm, the police were at various points. In fact, they had a very car wash where that incident took place. What we realized is that just with some few minutes later, lots of people just started gathering at that point. When we rushed over there, some few minutes later, the police uh, crowd control very closely arrived to try and control the situation. But the gentleman had both said with uh, the crowd, uh, with the, uh, the equipment at that particular car wash. We've been trying uh, to get an explanation for the police officers, but they are telling us we still need to speak to their uh, leaders who are not stationed here. So as it stands, the car wash I'm talking about, the gentleman have left the equipment that are supposed to be used to operate that particular car wash. Thank you for those updates. Uh, my colleague Joseph Akable bringing us some updates from Agbo Bulushi where uh, there was some clash between NDC and MPP supporters. Uh, you're watching John News today. My name is Venice Abubedu. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you more stories. Please don't go away. Thanks for staying on John News today. Now, the family of a 16-year-old girl who was shot and killed by a boy has expressed concern about how the case is being handled. The suspect is said to have shot the girl in the stomach with a pump-action gun. The uncle of the deceased says crucial evidence in the case could be tampered with. John News' Mark Tulagbaba has been speaking to him about developments surrounding this story. <laughs> was an undying passion for the pursuit of academic laurels. But that burning flame would be extinguished through the barrel of a gun. Last Wednesday morning, when the 16-year-old Achimota student Lili Chibodi Asigbeche stepped out of the four walls of a residence at East Ligon, she had no idea she was walking into death's tangled web. Relatives and friends have visited their home to commiserate with their family. Her mother, Bibiana Donko, sits in front of me in mourning clothes. Her slightly tinted glasses could not hide her teary eyes as she eulogizes her daughter. I can never say my child was a bad girl. She loved people and death has painfully snatched her from her. We want them to establish the truth. She cannot be killed in that manner. Just like that. Bibiana has run out of strength to narrate events leading to the death of her last child. Lily's uncle, Alfred Donko, mans up to narrate the gory incident. Uh, they said the whole abdomen was full of blood. There has been so much internal damage. Um, her kidneys had, um, more than half of the kidneys were destroyed. Um, the lungs are totally collapsed. There was some um, discussion between them and the woman was resistant. Uh, she was, didn't want to come in. So anyway, to cut a long story short, um, he got their crime officer to speak to the crime officer in Tema. It was at that stage that the crime officer in Tema informed the airport police that actually there were some firearms involved. The parents had come with the boy and um, um, they said their um, son was having a chat with our niece. 
and at some point he decided to go to his uh, father's bedroom and uh, he picked up a pump action gun and uh, the pump action gun and in attempt to demonstrate or fire or something the, the bullets went into our knees so we followed up to the courts and there the magistrates uh, said that um, because uh, it's a juvenile um, um, and following uh, some arguments made by the defense uh, that the child should be uh, given uh, in, uh, to the custody of the uh, parents. As you can see, my sister is very distressed. And um, we are looking up to the police and the justice system in Ghana to find out the truth. We find it difficult to believe that. The defense said that um, the police had gone to the Osu uh, juvenile bus stop and um, it was full. The prosecution denied that. So we don't understand why the child has been sent back to the home where this crime was committed. I mean, how are we sure that the evidence, you send the child back to the crime scene, how are we sure that the evidence is not going to be tampered with? The Children's Act 1998 protects the rights of the child even in circumstances when they commit an offense. But will this provision insulate the suspect from prosecution? Lawyer Edmond Amakwe Foley is a lecturer at the Gimpa Law School. Listen that in Ghana, a child under 12 years is deemed not to be criminally responsible. So if it happened to a child of 11 years, the law would not even begin to have this discussion we are having. That child will be deemed in law not to be able to commit a crime. But above 12 years, they are deemed to be criminally responsible. So they may be children, all right, but we will hold them liable for their conduct. So if the report suggests the gun that was used in carrying out the grievous offense belongs to the parents of the suspect, but can the boy's parents be held liable for an act that he committed? Lawyer Foley again. So the parent who is the licensed um, owner of the gun, by the terms of the license, is under responsibility to keep the gun in a safe place, keep it uncorked, I mean, the, um, the, 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 they have some part of that, it says they uh, leave it un, unlocked, yes, or locked, yes, it must be, the trigger must be locked, and all of those things, make sure, I mean, the magazine is taken out and all of that. So it's a question of evidence at this stage and what the police will find. If it is found out that the father did not keep the gun in a place and created a situation of risk, then yes, he could, um, incur some liability as far as negligently causing, I mean, the death of a person is concerned. But if it is found out that he had kept the gun in a very safe place and in a safe manner, according to the terms of the license and the way that a licensed gun owner is supposed to keep a gun, mm. but the son went out and found the gun and put it together and used it, then the boy still retains full criminal responsibility. Death has stolen a lily pale flower from the garden of the sick bitches. They are demanding justice for the death of their daughter, Lily Jibodi Asigbeche. Really sad story, but you stay with us here on Joy News. We'll keenly follow developments and bring you updates as and when they are available. Away from that, Ghana is stepping up efforts to improve health and the survival of nearly 7 million newborns and children in the country with the training of 1,500 pediatric nurses across the country over the next five years. 
The Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives, in partnership with the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto, Canada, undertaking the $22 million project with support from the Canadian government. The Canadian government's delegation, led by the Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, Selena Caesar Chavez, are in Ghana to observe progress of the training and the application of modern techniques. Ghana has been a long-term partner of uh, Canada, and we've uh, we've been partners for quite some time. And as we celebrate next year, our hundred or this year, sorry, our 150th uh, anniversary of Confederation, Ghana as well celebrates its 60th. We want to, and my presence here is to reinforce the fact that Canada wants to continue to have a partnership with Ghana, wants to continue to go down the road of uh, peace, peaceful pluralism, to have a focus on uh, peacekeeping, which Ghana has has been a leader in to focus continually on the health and well-being of women and girls and uh, we'd want to see that continue throughout this administration and I think we've seen clear indications that Ghana is a leader in uh, some of the values and some of the initiatives that we hold dear as Canadians. Dr. Jemima Dennis is president for the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. We believe that we have underserved regions within the country they will be posted to these regions in order that we can bridge the equity gap. When that is done, we are also looking at continuous professional education of all categories of nurses and midwives to have pediatric knowledge so that they would also, in their area of work, impact on, 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 on communities so that we will be able to save our newborns who are dying. We believe that though the college is a very new college. We are just about three years old, starting in 2013 with academic program we started in 2015. So within 2015 to date, we have recruited over 40 uh, uh, pediatric associates and residents who are actually uh, understand, uh, understanding uh, various aspects of pediatric nursing. They form about 50% of our total population of residents now. We have now over 100 residents. Other programs are also ongoing in the area of emergency care, neuroscience. We have um, palliative care, uh, uh, neonatal intensive care, oncology, which are also ongoing. But we believe that as more of these people are trained, they are also going to be positioned and they will impact on the healthcare system and it is going to go a long way to impact on the delivery system. We believe that nurses and midwives are the solution to increasing access to healthcare within Ghana and we are doing that through the college. Director General for the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Pia Dentra, says significant progress has been made over the years and hopes that the partnership will help strengthen the gains made so far. If you have the skill, there may be equipment. The equipment is basic. Start from small resuscitation, uh, you could, uh, that one, you could develop uh, uh, some and provide something for that. But then it also, apart from that, we could also have uh, maybe larger equipment, uh, like uh, maybe infant monitors and then incubators and so forth. So for me, I'm very much interested in the skill which uh, uh, the Canadian government is giving to us. What they are saying is that every baby should survive and become an adult. And if the baby should survive without any um, sickness or any, uh, uh, what do you call it, mental abnormality or something, then it means we have to be able to do the resuscitation very well. 1,500 pediatric nurses across the country are expected to be trained in the next five years. That was brought to you by Matilda Wemega. This is John News Today. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, Emmanuel Abwadjiriafi will bring us some stories from the world of business.